Well, in this video, we are going to learn how to use a multimeter to check if your motor is actually faulty or not. All right, so in other words, we are going to learn how to use a multimeter to diagnose a three-phase motor. Okay, so if your motor is running and all of a sudden it stops running, there are several things that can cause that. Actually, one aspect of it can come from the motor itself, and then another aspect can be as a result of a faulty contactor. Sometimes if your overload really is faulty, that can also cause the motor not to work. There are several things, a lot of things that can make this motor not to work. But in this video, we are going to focus on how we can use the multimeter to diagnose the three-phase motor so that you'll be sure whatever problem is making the motor not to work is actually not from the motor. So here, as you can see, there are three lines and actually three-phase motors before they can work need to be connected either in star configuration or delta configuration. And so when we want to test or diagnose the motor, the first thing we do is that we remove each of these cables so that whether it is connected in star or delta, we remove those connections. So in this case, we are going to remove this star connection. That bridges the ends of all the other side of the windings together so that each of the windings will now be free. All right. So first, we remove this. So we remove these strips of metals that bridge the ends of the windings together. All right. So now the ends of the windings are not connected. So after removing the connections, we can now start our testing. All right, so as a matter of fact, there are various faults that can happen in this motor that will require different other instruments to do the diagnosis. So we have a fault like a short circuit fault, an open circuit fault, and then an insulation problem. So if you are expecting an insulation problem in this motor, the best instrument you can use is the insulation resistance tester. And you can find a very comprehensive video on how to use the insulation resistance tester to test the windings of the motor. And I have actually shared that video among the videos I have shared under this video. But in this video, what we can use this multimeter to check, which we are going to do now, is either to check if there is a short circuit in the windings or if there is an open circuit in any of the windings. Now, before we can do this test successfully, you have to be able to identify each of the windings. So in this motor, there are three windings, and then each of them has a beginning from here and has an end here. But because this is a three-phase motor, and then it may be required to be connected in either star or delta configurations. The terminals are arranged in a way to make it very simple so that you can easily connect it either in star or delta. Connecting the motor windings in star simply means that you are bridging all the ends of the windings together. And then connecting them in delta means that you are connecting the beginning of winding U to the end of winding W. And then you are connecting the beginning of winding V to the end of winding U. And then you are connecting the beginning of winding W to the end of winding V. All right, so I have a very comprehensive video on how to connect the three-phase motor windings at the terminal block. And that video is titled, Three-Phase Motor Winding Connection at the Terminal Block. Please look for it and watch. I have actually shared it under this video. So in this arrangement, we have winding U, winding V, and then winding W. So wherever you see U1 means that is the beginning of the winding U. And then wherever you see U2 is the end of winding U. So as you can see, we have U1 here, and then we have U2 here. So it actually means the beginning of coil U is connected here, and then the end of coil U is connected here. Then when we come to winding V, we have the beginning of that winding V connected here, and then the end of that winding V is connected here. 
Then we have winding W. The beginning of winding W is connected here, and the end of winding W is connected here. All right, so we have U1, V1, W1. Then we have U2, V2, W2. All right, so now let's start with our testing. All right, so there are two tests that we can use this multimeter to do on this MUTU. The first one is to check if the windings are continuous, and the second one is to check if there is a short between any two of these windings. All right, now, for the continuity of the coil, um, there is one thing we have to bear in mind. For normal continuity tests, for example, if you are testing the continuity of this material, this is a metal, and it has a very negligible resistance. And so if this is one end, and this is the other end, and I use the metal leads to touch the two ends, there will be a sound like this, and the ohms reading will actually be zero, as you can see on the meter, because this material actually has a negligible ohmic value or a negligible resistance. But in the case of the windings in this motor, they have a certain amount of resistance. And so they have a certain amount of resistance depending on the size of wire that is used for the winding. And then the length of the windings, you will have a certain amount of resistance. But then the strategy is that you may not actually know whether the resistance of the coil is 20 ohm or 40 ohm. But what can guide you to be able to ascertain if the continuity is okay is when you get similar resistance values for all the three coils or the three windings, then you are sure that the, the continuity might be very okay. So here, let's start with winding U. This is the beginning of winding U. And this is the end of winding U. And then we are getting a resistance of 34 ohms. Thirty-three ohms. So we are getting a resistance of 33 ohms. All right. So this is a second winding. The beginning is here, but it has its end here. So we check that one also to see if we get a closer value or a similar value of ohms reading. Okay, so this is 34 ohms. And then we move to the last one. This is the beginning of that core, and the end is here. And that one too, and that one too, we are getting 34, 33 ohms. All right, so 33, 33, 34. So obviously, um, we can conclude that the windings are continuous. They are okay. But in a case where you test a particular winding and then you have resistance reading in infinity or you have a very high resistance that is very abnormal from the other two windings, then that should tell you that there is probably an open circuit in that particular winding. So the next test we can use the multimeter to do on this motor is to check if there is a short circuit between any two of the windings. And so for short circuit test, we'll be testing between two different windings to see if there is any leakage or if there is any connection between any two of the windings. So simply that one, we can do it just here like this, between U1 and V1 like this. And so typically, if there is an open circuit in any of the windings that we checked earlier on, you may have a reading like this, okay? So this means that there is no connection between these two wires. Then the next one is we'll test between U1 and then W1 to also check if there is any connection. And here, there is no connection. So we don't have any reading. Then the last one is we check between V and W to see if there is any connection. And as you can see, there is no connection at all. There is no reading. But when we do between V1 and V2, you can see that there is a reading. And the ohms, there is continuity. And the resistance of that winding is 34 ohms. All right, so simply, this is how you can use the multimeter to test a three-phase motor. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please kindly like, share, and subscribe to stay connected. 
See you in my next video.